Welcome back to another episode of Barn Built Beaters. This video is a continuation of my compound turbo build. To complete the turbo system, I need to fabricate the wastegate system using this table full of parts. However, I'm doing this strategically. I developed tubing building blocks and all readily available tube diameters and bend radii to also include exhaust bellows. These building blocks replicate the exact exhaust pieces you can buy online. Some are slightly altered for better 3D printing. This development took months of trial and error, three major design changes, and hundreds of iterations getting tolerances to work exactly as I intended, and loads of wasted filament and time printing. To be honest, I almost gave up. The good news for you fabricators is these are now available as ready to 3D print digital files on my Etsy. This means for one small price, you can print as many as you would like for much cheaper than you can purchase them, including the filament and possibly even the 3D printer itself. The one small catch, you need O-rings to make this system work, but I tell you where to buy them and they're also stupid cheap. The optional magnets are not needed, but a nice upgrade if your budget allows. Since I went through many iterations of these building blocks and physically testing the product, I already knew how I wanted my wastegate tubing to be rooted. I assembled the blocks together in the shape I wanted, and this is what I came up with. The beauty of these blocks is you are able to find the optimal design, whether that is the most efficient or the most aesthetically pleasing without wasting any material. With the design finalized, I knew the exact pieces I needed to buy in the correct tubing diameter, the correct bend radii, and the exact quantity, meaning I have zero waste. I placed my order and began prepping the pieces once they arrived. I tacked all the pieces into their 90 degree bends, checking and adjusting using the jig I designed. With everything tacked, it was time to weld them out.
With my design, I have the two smaller wastegate piping merging into a larger two and a half diameter tube to not have any flow restriction. I planned on fabricating this merge out of two 45 degree bends. I designed and printed a jig so I knew where to cut to form the merge. Once it was tacked up, it was time to form the oval into the two and a half inch circle. I designed a press fixture to hold the merge and support the areas I didn't want to deform while applying pressure, but it didn't work and I was forced to come up with a new solution, a metal 3D printed merge. I figured the material cost in trying to repeatedly attempt to fabricate this, I may be able to have one printed out of metal. Plus, it's a technology I've always been curious about. I jumped into CAD, designed a sweeping merge, and $170 later, it was on my doorstep a week later from China. Super impressive. I then attached the 90 degree bends to it and progressed. Some of you may notice my wastegate placement is less than ideal as it's perpendicular to the flow of the exhaust, which can lead to boost creep. I got advice from a professional fabricator who said one way to negate the poor placement is rather than coming off at a strict 90 degrees, use a sweeping 90 degree bend instead. This allows for an easier path for exhaust to flow into the gate. Hopefully with the video, this makes a bit more sense. I trusted him and began working on the sweeping 90s. I cut them to size, faced them on a sanding belt, tacked the V-bands onto them, and then later attached them to the merge assembly and began welding. I was a bit worried about how 3D printed metal would weld as I have heard cast iron is difficult. However, to my surprise, it welded pretty easily. The only thing I noticed is there is some junk floating in the weld pool. This could have been because of how I cleaned it, though I also read others mentioning this too. Fully welding out this assembly was a challenge as I needed it to be fully put together. However, that makes it hard to get the torch where you need it, the filler and a spot to add to the puddle, and lastly, just to see what you're doing. Overall, it came out decent. Eventually, it was time to move on to one of the scarier parts of this project. 
I needed to attach the gates to the manifold. I removed everything from the truck and got the manifold onto the workbench. I used my laser to best align the wastegate assembly centered on the manifold so I can mark where I need the holes for exhaust flow to be cut into the manifold. Speaking of cutting, that was the scary part, cutting into a thousand dollar manifold. Once I drilled the hole out, I had to open it up to the shape of the sweeping 90 degree bends using a carbide bit. I had pictured this manifold to be completely hollow inside, though I should have known better. There is internal structures to guide the exhaust flow to the outlet of the exhaust manifold. I wasn't sure if I should keep these or blend them as leaving them may direct the flow around the gate, which leads to boost creep. However, I decided to blend them a bit as I'd rather have worse flow and not have boost creep than the other way around. Once I was done welding the B-bands onto my sweeping 90s, it was now time to weld the assembly to the manifold. This was pretty hard to get situated just to tack it, as it didn't want to sit nicely on the holes. I eventually got it where I wanted, spacing it off the manifold using filler wire to ensure I got a great penetration, as the manifold will have the most pressure in it. Welding this was extremely difficult, as again, it's hard to get the torch and the filler in where you need it while also being able to see. But to my surprise, these also turned out pretty decent. After everything cooled down, it was time to get everything back onto the truck after attaching a portion of the wastegate tubing to see how it sits. Because I went from the fabricated merge to the 3D printed merge, some of this tubing didn't fit correctly. I needed to add a small straight section and I was back to business. As always, tack everything up and then fully weld it out. The next step was to create the merge tube where the wastegate dumps into the hot pipe between the turbos. This is where I love having a 3D printer. I designed a jig and CAD so I can trace out the shape I need to cut out for the perfect merge. Okay. 
Off camera, I cleaned it up, figured out the small pie cuts I needed to connect everything and tacked it up. This merge fit almost perfectly the first try. This compound kit honestly looks pretty cool on my bench upside down. You really get a good view of all the piping that's involved and rooted. I got to work welding all the pie cuts up, stopping at the merge in case it didn't fit right. And good thing, because it worked on me a bit. You can see how my welding has improved over this project. Semi-dull, cold welds on the left, and nice colorful, bright, filled welds on the right. It almost makes me want to redo parts, but I'm not that crazy. Anyways, that gap is too large and I need to cut the merge off and remake it. Good thing, because I was able to better center it on the straight section for a bit cleaner of a look. And lastly, the scariest cut of them all, cutting the hot pipe. If I didn't get this perfect, I essentially just ruined it. I took lots and lots of time here to make sure I cut it out properly by slowly creeping up on the cut line. I figured I would rather be shy of the cut line than ruin my hot pipe, so I'm sure I left a bit more than I should have. Lastly, I reinstalled everything, tacked it up, and began fully welding. I didn't film this because it was late at night and getting into that joint with everything connected was the hardest weld of my life. It honestly came out much better than it should have too. I welded as much as I could with everything connected to prevent warping. I then took it off and welded the rest I couldn't reach, however, it did warp on me. I'm just praying it stays sealed, but I'm fairly confident it will. If not, I'll have to cut a section and clock it appropriately so at least it should be fixable. I reinstalled everything onto the truck and will be painting everything once I finish the downpipe and the intake side to prevent any damage to the paint. Anyways, I'll shut up now so you can enjoy the pictures in peace. Thanks for watching.